Round three footy here at the MC. Coming into a huge contest. These are the finding clash against the Swans. I'm here with Bailey. How are you, Buzz? The Bees are going two and one today. Bonnie's going to have 40 touches. We're going to have 48 beers. And watch the Bees get up against the Swans. Well, I think you've been, we've been to a couple of games together, but the one sort of famous one you did journey with me was against Freo round 11 last year, and you tipped the upset. You tipped the face yeah, of Freo by about the margin. Yeah, I'm pretty good on the tips. Uh, so, going off that, I'm tipping the D's today. It should be a convincing win. Backing in the D's. So, this is a bit of a bogey game. We never beat the Swans. We never beat the Swans. We never beat the Pies, and we never beat the Cats. So, um... I'm a little bit nervous that this will... I'm actually... I'm walking into this game for the yeah, first time in like three years going... I'm probably not going to get it done. Uh, really? I'm sort of, yeah, yeah, I'm sort of resigned that we might not get the chockey. Uh, that's a horrible... Yeah, that's horrible. a glass half empty. It's a glass half empty. <laughs> How many have you got Ben Royan for today on debut? Ben Royan will kick four goals too. That's interesting. Everyone loves him. He's a star in the making. I think he could, yes. could kick four. Uh, I will tip the D's in my prediction though. I'm going to go to the D's by 22 points. We're going to grind it out and we're going to get the job done. But this will be a bit of a scalp. The Swans are flying. Nah, D's by 30. <laughs> Huge test. We're going to find out where the D's are at. A bit of a, a bit of an audit here at the MCG for a Sunday afternoon. The Swans are a classy outfit. We're going to find out where the D's rank. It's about to kick off. Come on, D's. We absorbed a lot of Swans pressure for the first three minutes there. Good end-to-end -end transition. Van Royan getting the body in, getting involved. And he's passed one off and Neil Bullens kicked the first of the game. These guys are just consumers. You just yeah. consume and then you use yeah. really well. Bit of a rucking infringement and Jacob Van Royen's going to line up for his first goal in the AFL. He's been everywhere, the man. Three goals. What did you say? Four goals too? I said four goals too. He's lining up for his first. Come on, JBR. Come on, man. We'll watch it live. Here what are the you the yeah, big Roo, the big rooster. His follow-up and his defensive effort, he loves to tackle, he loves to crash a pack. He's a big boy. Bang. Yes! Go Dave! Charlie Spargo with one of the weirdest hangers you'll ever see. Sort of two hands in the back, two knees in the back, two feet sort of launch. Uh, but he's taken a great grab. Then the D's have kicked the first three of the game and they lead by 16. They've got the jump. Talk about Warwick Kappa. How about Charlie Spargo? <laughs> Spargo, will he ever come down the great man? This is a scintillating start. It's the perfect start for the Melbourne Football Club. Everything we could ask for is working. And Bailey made a great observation that Harrison Petty is in the forward line. He's in for forward Didn't right start now. back, but the tackle tackle footy here was running the other way and then got the hands off in the second effort. He's looking good up there. It's going to be interesting to see the rest of the game, see if he goes, see if he goes back or not. I can't, I can't believe they pulled that lever. Is McDonald playing? No, McDonald got dropped. That's interesting. It is. So, yeah, So, uh, welcome Dave, our footy, Van Royen. Uh, he's in the ruck and Buddy sort of just walked through him, kicked a little dribbling goal. It's the first for the Swans. And, we're not going to see much more of Buddy, so this is an absolute privilege to see him study stuff on I love, the MCG. I love saying Buddy, but to your point, you've got uh, Petty starting forward, or the Swans are going forward again. Logan oh, McDonald Mark. Petty starting forward. We've got Clayton Oliver off the half back line at the minute. It's bizarre, but I like it. In game 150, Clayton Oliver goes bang. The D's 6 straight 36. The Swans 1 3 9. Oh, it's scintillating. Football. Conversion kills. <laughs> Well, my, my hypothesis is if you kick four goals a term, you're going to be really hard to beat. Quarter time here at the MCG. The D's are up by 28 points. One of the best quarters I've seen us play in a long, long time. I was glass half empty coming into this game, but they've blown away a few of the initial anxieties that I had. But we know the Swans are a great team, so we've got to play the full three quarters to get the job done. Harrison Petty in the forward line, Trent Rivers around the midfield, Clayton Oliver was off the half back line at one stage, um, Ben Royer was huge, Alex Neil Bullen was great, it's just been a superb performance by everyone, Buddy Franklin, even though we always seem to, and I want to touch wood when I say this, we always seem to quell his, his influence, he's still so dangerous and, and lethal, but um, Yes, the new blokes are stepping up today. Judd McBee took a great intercept mark in front of us. And um, oh, we've just been so good that term. So hopefully we can 
build the momentum, continue this into the second quarter, and almost potentially, if we can do what we did in that term, put the game to bed by half time. Terrific start by the Dees, second quarter about to kick off. Happily kicks the first of the second for the Sydney Swans. They reduce it to a 22 point margin. Um, he's a very dangerous player, Papley, so hopefully that's his first and only snag for the day. But Luke Parker sends it back inside 50. Got to switch on here, Dees. <laughs> Clayton Oliver very clumsily tackles Luke Parker. Luke Parker was trying to dispose of it. So the defence is Clayton Oliver <coughs> is trying to make sure he can't kick or handball. But in the motion, and as Luke Parker's trying to get rid of it, it looks slinging and it looked quite dangerous. Luke Parker's fine, but that's been a hot topic. That could be it could be a week. If they're trying to do something about these head knocks and and the, the suings and whatever else. I feel like it could be a week. I thought last night for the Saints game there was a really bad crash in and that, that, that would be a few, I think. So yeah. I feel like this year could be the year. Come on, guys. He's so reliable. And Bailey Fritch with some elite body on Paddy McCartan. Paddy McCartan probably has a lot of kilograms on Bailey Fritch, but it was just the craft, the full craft, takes the mark and slots it. The D's are out to the 30 point lead. This has been a great second term. The Swans started it well with a couple of snags, but the D's have responded here. A lot of snags in this second term. Angus Brayshaw just let Buddy Franklin go for a Sunday stroll at the MCG. And Mark and uncontested in the forward line. That's a that's an error from our defence. But Buddy Franklin capitalises and the Swans are humming at the moment. No bottom kicks. I think the Swans third in a row. They're pretty lucky to be this close in the contest. They sort of did get not dominated, but they were on the back foot for two and a half quarters there, but they've responded well and they've reduced it to 17 points. So the D's would want the next one. They don't want to throw away what's been a pretty good first half. Sydney rocked up for the second half of that second turn. They reduced it to 15. The D's were on top pretty dominantly for the first part of that half. But the, the Swannies, as you expect, responded pretty strongly. Papley got involved. Both uh, just using the ball inside 50. He hit Logan McDonald up late. And they've reduced it to 15 points. Just smashing a pie at half time. So we lead by 15 points. And it reminds me of sort of most of the games we lost last year where we're up by 30 points through periods of the first half and other teams ran us down and chased us down. So it's going to be really interesting to see whether we have matured as a side. And we can, and we can sort of capitalise on the early momentum and the early scoreboard pressure. If we get ran down from here, it'll be super frustrating. It'll feel like a 2022 performance. If we can hold on from here and win this game of football, it'll show a sign of maturity and maybe a sign that we've leveled up compared to the team last year. So this is a big second half of the days. We don't want to be one and two. We want to be ahead of the ledger against a quality outfit like the Swans. Huge ramifications in this second half. Come on, Deeds. Absolute privilege to watch Clayton Oliver go about his business every weekend at the MCG. He's kicked his second for the day. Bit of a soft 50 metres, I reckon. Mill sort of body checked him as he marked, and it, it did come across as if he got clipped in the head, but I'm not sure he did, even though, you know, if I was out there on the wing copying it, I probably would have fallen similarly to Clayton. But um, great start to this second half by the Ds, and we're going inside 50 again. Hopefully, we can put some more scoreboard pressure on here. We've come up to the second level, Baz, because we want to see the structures, we want to see the play unfold. Don't lie to them, Doss. There was kids down there being annoying, crying, sucking on their dummies and spitting them out, and we had to get away from that. But we are real, real analytical. Absolutely, we are. That's we, what we're here for. We, we like to see the structures, we like to see the matchups. Um, yeah, <coughs> it was a bit of a funny sort of crowd around. It's very. <coughs> it was a very casual football audience. They were there just for the afternoon, just to have a good time, which you're welcome to at the footy, but we like to get in and amongst it. Don't sit next to me. If you're not you yeah. really good about it. If you don't have your footy record and you're not sort of watching your your first cracks in AFL 360 every night, don't don't come near me. Don't talk to me. <laughs> every oh, yeah. time we play the Swans, Tom Papley kicks a goal like that. Every time. On the run, from 50, on the left. Great response by the Swans. The score it's is just teetering around this 15-point margin. It's sort of an uncomfortable <laughs> margin where you can't sit back in the seat and sort of count it as a win because the Swans are only kicking a, a bit away from 
really getting back into it, so it's quite nerve-wracking. It's now just an eight-point margin. This feels so much like the qualifying final. We were on top early, and then they just crawled their way back into it through sort of snags like this, sort of opportunistic goals. Oh, they are just a team that never goes away. We're going to have to play the full 120 minutes to get this one done. And I'm anxious. We need the next one, the Ds. Lands to reduce it to two points. He's missed again. Getting a little bit lucky now, McDonald. Seven point game. Here we go. The Ds respond and keep our noses in front. We're up by two goals. The work right there from Kay Chandler to get from the Shane Warne stand side over to the Olympic stand to take the grab was unbelievable. Great kick by Lockie Hunter and he goes back and slots it. The Ds have been pretty economical with their shots at goal. And we're on, we're just sort of batting away the momentum that the Swans had. If we could answer with another, that would be really handy. Bailey Fritsch slots his second, and the gap is back out to 18 points. I'm trying to speak it into existence, but you're hoping that they've sort of thrown everything at us, the Swans, and maybe that is just the break in the game that we needed. Uh, the forward line, it's working superbly. That was just a lane for Bailey Fritsch to lead up to. And Stephen May just hit the kick to perfection. So we've got the gap again. Another couple here could really sort of squash everything that the Swans worked for in that second and the start of the third term. We've responded to the momentum. We've kicked the last two or three. I think we kicked the last three. It's back to 24 points. Bailey Fritsch is one of the classiest forwards in the competition. So silky, and he's banged it through on the left. Another couple here and the game might be broken. So there's a lot about a football club who can take a little bit of adversity and then clap back. I like it. We, we uh, had to bite down on the, on the mouth guard, absorb a couple of shots, and we fired back with a couple of our own. As we say that, though, Papley's taking a mark inside 50, and he's going to have a shot. They need this to sponsor Nine on the back foot. Nine out for third, I might add. Fritters kicked three straight as well, so... Put an arm across this Papley fella. Tom Papley kicks three. He's probably the one player who, whenever we play them, always just does us. He is a, a freak of nature. Who else? What, what other players really give you a hard time, typically? I love to any team. We're well, not bad with key forwards. It's, it's almost like your third stringers. Every time we play, and every time we play a team who's got a good young up and comer, they always get the nab rising star against us. Or like a third string forward. Like I remember Harry Himmelberg kicked five against us. Yeah. I reckon Hipwood early in his career kicked like five against us. Like, Bo Meister back at the Saints kicked like five against us. Just weird sort of third stringers always have a day Papley's out against not us. A third stringer. just a star, <laughs> mind you. Um, yeah, they, they answered back 18 points. It's a good game of footy, this. Three quarter time here at the MCG, and the D's are up by 25 points 14 4 to 9 9, 63 88, up by 25. Oh. Just around the grounds. Thanks, Dash. Do we got some stats? What? What is it? You've got the four leading disposal getters on the field. Truck with 25. Ola 22. Hunter with two goals and 20. Oh. Grundy with 18. And I'll find some rock stats for you as soon as I can. Get us some rock stats, Ash Um Yeah, awesome performance so far. As I said at half time, last year there was multiple times where we'd be leading by. Th I think every game we lost. Besides the Geelong one, but every game we lost last year, we were up by 30 points in the first half and just got run down. So it felt like we were in a position to get charged down again, fought off some momentum, counter punch in the third term, and we have a healthy 25 point lead. If we kick the first couple, we can almost just sort of ice the game out. Chandler lining up for number three. Oh, that sounded a lead off the boot, Gay Chandler. Go Dees! Coming into this game, I really wanted us to beat a Sydney side. They're tipped to be a top six, top four team. Their first couple of rounds were unbelievable. And in 2021, I think going into the finals, we were something like 8-0, or it was something ridiculous, where we were undefeated against top four sides or, or top eight teams. And in 2022, I think towards the end of the season, our record, I, I don't think we really beat a top eight team. Um, we sort of got found out against sort of like for like football side so it's very important that we perform like this against the Swans 
because they're going to be a team in that same bracket as us come the end of the year. In my tired weariness, I've called Nick Blakey Nick Larky, but um, <laughs> well, he's kicked it like he's Nick Larky. He's absolutely slotted it. Uh, we miss, they hit. Trent Rivers has missed up this end directly in front. And um, old Blakey Larky has put it through down the other end. It's 27 points. We don't want to concede the next. That would just open the door ever so slightly. It's a good game for the Swannies, I think. 27's not unachievable. I agree. I agree. So the next five minutes is super important here. Jacob Van Royen was just floating around by himself inside 50. Tracks put it on the defender's head. And Van Royen's taking a screamer. He's lining up for his second. We love this man. Roo, come on, son. Oh, get ready. Oh, we don't want to go early on eight disposals, three marks, two snags and a score assist, but he's, he's almost sort of favourite player status after game one, Jacob Van Royen. We love the great man. And Petty. Get him on my jersey. Petty doing some great stuff down the forward line as well, so let's go back to the well. Long oh, kick forward. Again. Royen. Oh, Petty. Oh, he loves to tackle. That's almost holding the ball in it. Van Royen holding the ball. Van Royan's going for his third. That's it. I'm going for it. He's off. one of the all-time favourites. I tipped him for four at the start of the game. He's kicked three. But he needs to. He's had four goals too. So that means he needs three more shots of goal. He. Oh, I love the man. I love the man. He crashes packs. That was a holding the ball. That's how he got the that last goal was a holding the ball decision because he loves the follow-up. He loves the tackling. He is. Um. He looks ready-made. James Royan. Jordan. Slots another snag, it's 116 to 76. It's getting procession style, this is great. This is a great performance. I, I was not expecting this dominance of a performance, this dominant of a performance. Um, this has been unreal, and now it's sort of party time. It's sort of, you know, 540 MCG Sunday. This is where you sort of, if you're a fritter, you get out the back and you sort of grab a couple of Joe the Gooses, Really feel your boot style. This has been a terrific outing for the Melbourne Football Club. Petty and Van Royen taking us to the promised land. Come on, come on Harrison. Come on. Come on, Petty. Finish, son. Oh, it's party time. Oh, it's party time here at the MCG. I, 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 I said it was fill your boots time, and Harrison Petty has just wandered down and taken a great clunk. Oh, this is a, an amazing performance. The margin's starting to really blow out. Is that 46 points? It doesn't matter what it is, it's a lot. I reckon that's 46 points. Bloody hell. It is raining snags here at the MCG. Tom Sparrow puts through another one. Oh, it's getting ugly. How about that percentage boost, eh? <laughs> 128 points. Who said we lack firepower up front? We got Ben Brown, we got it's Harrison Betty. We got Van Royen. And he's back on Van Royen. He goes in the guts. Maybe Benny Brown got subbed off. Because we haven't seen him for a half. Malksham's going to have a shot on the siren. This would take his best kick. We couldn't will Van Royen to four, unfortunately. Come on, Malksham. Deeds. Melsham slots it on the siren. What an absolute sausage roll. And the D's get home by 50 big ones. Keep your eye on the red and the blue. Van Royen kicks three. Absolute clinical. Harrison Petty, the swing man. The midfield was unbelievable. Stephen May was enormous. The Swans fought hard through the second and third, but we broke the game open late in the third with a couple of counter-punch goals. And this is huge. We lost to a lot of like-for-like like like teams up at the pointy end of the ladder last season. That was really frustrating, but to knock off a, a fellow contender is absolutely huge. So the D's get home by about 50 odd points at the MCG. I think we'll be in the top four, hopefully after a bit of percentage, after that performance. Kate Chandler kicked three, Van Royen kicked three. A couple of others bobbed up, which was handy. I can't really remember who else got on the scoreboard. Um, superb performance. Very, very happy. As I said throughout the game, we've, we've beaten a like-minded 
or a like for like team, another contending team, so that always feels good. And then we gotta go over to the West next Sunday night, so might have to stream that one. Baz, what have you got to say on the wrap up? Van Royen, good. Bailey, happy. McDonald, ecstatic. It's been a great day. Days win. Days win. Thanks everyone for tuning in. We'll yeah. see you next time for another game day vlog. Jeez, go day.